Well, hello everyone. I'm back again and it's finally Friday. Yes, I do like Fridays. So here I am with my new start. And I know that I'd been saying to people that I wasn't gonna start anything new for a while, but I'm so, 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 so close to finishing my Aurora cabin that I just couldn't resist starting something else. So I decided to take on a project that was, again, very different to the ones that I'm currently doing. And here it is. And I don't know, but some of you are probably going to be clever enough to guess what kind of chart this is just by looking at the little section that I've done here. And yeah, you can see just how colourful this area is. And even that tiny little section is gonna be quite recognizable for quite a few people. So let me tell you a bit more about this chart and what I've done so far. So this is a chart by, let's see, the artist is called Leonid Afrimov. There's a lot of different paintings by him that, are, that you can actually cross stitch at the moment. And I looked at all the ones that were on the Heaven and Earth Desi Design website and a lot of them were really gorgeous. But then I saw one on a different website that I absolutely loved and I decided that I was going to give that one a go. Um, it just appealed to me straight away. And I also decided that I was going to use this fabric which I bought recently, which is the 25 count um, even weave and as you can see there's no grid there's nothing there I've just been using my plain fabric without gridding it and I've been doing fine I'll just show you what this picture looks like here and there it is that's the actual finished artwork and this pattern is by a designer called Artesi they are also very popular and you can find their shop on the internet and they've got tons and tons and tons of great 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 pictures great designs so this is what I've started. And just look at that, isn't that beautiful? Just a splash of color, so vibrant, so different to the sort of mood that I've got at the moment with the other ones. So let's see what happened. I started in the top left corner as I usually do. Now I had a bit of a faff going on with this because I thought I would try something a little bit different. And I started working in the diagonal. So working in the diagonal means basically that instead of working in rows or columns, you're basically starting in a corner and working outwards so that you'll always have a diagonal line wherever you finished. So what happened to me was I started working on this diagonal venture and I don't know why, but I just kept making mistakes. I couldn't get a nice neat line and it took me so much effort to get a nice neat line. I think that I've gotten so used to working in a straight line that when I tried to count in the diagonal line, I kept making mistakes. And there was a bit of unpicking going on and frogging. So I thought to myself, you know, it got to a point where I just kind of put it aside and thought, I don't really want to continue with this because I'm finding it hard going. Now, that's not going to happen to everybody. Obviously, there are people who love working on diagonal. There's a whole Facebook group about working in diagonal that you can join. And it really does, does work for a lot of people. I don't know. It just all went completely crazy. So I thought, why am I trying so hard to do something that's obviously not pleasant or not working for me? So I thought, that's it, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna go back to doing what I'm used to, what I feel comfortable with, what I can actually watch television with. So started from the top to try and rectify my diagonal by doing more rows. And the only way I can do it really is by carrying on doing these rows until I get to the bottom here, and then I can continue with my pages. Now, the other thing that's gonna shock you here is the length of this square here is a full page. Now, I know you're gonna say that looks really tiny, but yes, it does, but I'm not doing a large chart. I am doing a, I don't think it's even a small chart because this chart has got the um, calculations for 14 count, 16 count and 18 count. And they're a fairly good, it's a fairly good size chart for that count. For the 14 count, it's gonna be about 21 inches by 16 inches. 
On the 18 count, it's going to be about 17 widths and 12 inches height. But because I'm doing it on 25 count, I calculated that it would be 12 inches by 8.8. .8. Now that's not very big and that's a great size for me. I don't want to have all my charts super huge. I'm doing two regular heaven and earth designs and they're pretty big, both of them. So do I really want to add another regular to my, to my day? No, I wanted to do something for the pleasure of it. But I don't necessarily want it to take another five years. So even though I found out by my calculation that this was going to be smaller, it's like great. It's a beautiful little size. So 12 inches by 8.8 .8 inches works fine for me. I can find a lovely little frame and I can put it up on the mantelpiece something like that and I think that'll look beautiful. You're not going to lose detail just because the size changes. The actual detail doesn't really change. So anyway it's going to look exactly the same as it looks there but it's just going to be a smaller picture. The picture's going to be smaller in size. That's really all there is to it. So I've decided I'm going to go page by page and I started this first page and then I'm going to carry on this way and then I'm going to work down so this one shouldn't really take me a huge amount of time that's what I thought initially when I started doing it but looking at it again now this chart is absolutely confetti crazy look how many colors are coming out of these holes it's absolutely mad um, you just can't uh, get through a whole row without changing your thread multiple times now I thread my needle really fast so that's not going to be an issue for me but do not do this chart if you don't want to be, you know, constantly changing your colours because this is just a hodgepodge of paint. Like, it's like the painting. Look, there's different colours everywhere. So you're not going to get a straight row. In fact, looking at the chart, I've barely seen an area where you've got one block of colour. Barely. Maybe little tiny sections like that. But this is the style of this painting and that's just what you that's what you get if you want to replicate this painting you have to do all those colors so i'm that's one of the other reasons why i didn't want to choose a larger version because i don't want to spend five years uh spending one hour to do a, a 20 stitches so you know take all these things into consideration because your time is precious now because even though the journey is nice you know sometimes if you take on too many large projects I don't know about you, but I just would feel so daunted. I'd just be overwhelmed. So I feel like this is a good enough size that I'm actually going to get somewhere at some point in time. That's not going to be in the too, too distant future. <laughs> so that's basically what I've, I did. So I decided to switch from diagonal to going back to doing the rows. And I'm going to take a chance on this because my tension isn't very tight. And I've noticed on little trials with other charts that I'm not seeing any lines. So I'm gonna see if I get a line when I begin this section. And if I do get a line, it's not gonna be the end of the world now. Um, I just feather a bit on the next one. So I'm not gonna fuss about it. I'm not gonna stress about it. That's the, the chart and it's called Melody of the Night. And it's one of Afrimov's beautiful paintings. And I just, I just love the scenery here, the way everything I, I like the composition of this one particularly don't know why there's a little bit of everything there's a seating area there's a lantern here there's a couple with a dog walking along in the middle it's a little bit romanticized and then there's a lovely river and I think it look despite the fact that it's going to be a smaller size I still think it's going to look impressive um, so I'm hoping I can fit this one well I am actually fitting this one into my uh, rotation of projects so it's not going to be, it's not going to take a huge amount of time, I hope. The only thing is that it's a bit slow going with this confetti, that I'll have to admit. But not to the point where you feel like it's burning you out. Because I will pick it up and do it just as and when, you know, I'm taking a break from the other ones or slotting it in between the other ones that I'm doing. Now, if you're also wondering what these little guys are here... These are silicon, and I'll just show you. These are little silicon pieces like this. And all they do is they, they cling together because they've got a magnet inside. Um, so they're cable tidies, really. So basically, if you have any extra fabric that you want to hold up, 
at the bottom. You can use a cable tidy and you can hold up your fabric. Oh, they do cling together. So you just bunch your fabric up and they'll be magnetized together like that. So I've just left them there for the moment. Don't need, don't have a lot of fabric. I cut this piece to size so that I would have just the right size that I need to give me a nice three inch border or a little bit more on either side. And um, so I'm not, I don't really need to use these, but they also work as needle minders, which is really useful. So not only do they work as needle minders, if you look um, down the bottom here, they also work at pulling back my threads and so it's like a three in one, isn't it really? The funny thing about them is that when I looked at them and I purchased them, I thought, oh, they're so cute. Look at those little cats, aren't they so cute? Little tiny cats or kittens. And then I saw a post, somebody saying that they were owls. So I had to look at them again and think, oh God, yeah, they are, they're owls. I'm sure they're owls. But at first sight, I don't know why, but I was convinced that they were cats. But anyway, that's just probably how my brain interpreted them. Um, so, no, I'm not disappointed because I do like owls. So that's fine with me. We can have a whole bunch of owls on my project. That's, that's fine. So these, I got these as a pack of six and you can get them. I mean, there's loads of them on Amazon. You can just choose the ones that you like. Um, they do come in different lengths as well. So you might want to get them a bit longer if you've got a lot of fabric to tidy up or a little bit shorter if you just want to use them for decoration or to use as a needle minder you know it's entirely up to you but anyway coming back to this chart um i'm just wondering if, if any of you've done one of his designs leonid afrimov is the artist and and what do you think actually working this design or do you know someone that's done this design um I, again i went back to the 25 count simply because 25 count is what i'm used to it's the count that i'm most comfortable with and i'm just kind of used to this and of course i don't feel the need to grid because of the fact that i have um this row thing going on so all i'm counting really is in rows and if 25 count is working for me although this one um, it does feel a little different to the 25 count even weave, easy count, the one that has the pre-gridded 10 by 10 squares that are in grey, the very popular kind of fabric that people use. That does feel, the holes actually feel a bit bigger than this. I don't know why, because they're both 25 count. It's a bit more stretchy, a tiny bit more pliable. And I think that's probably what happens with the 25 count easy guide when you wash it. I think it'll be like this. So let me know what you think. That would be great. What other sort of designs do you like by this particular artist? How do you cope with getting through all these color changes? That would also be interesting to know. So hopefully I'll see you again soon and you'll come back and let me know how you're getting on with your stitching projects and how you're feeling about your stitching at the moment. So I'll see you again very soon. Take care.